CO2 injection into a pipeline and the difference uh, between the carbonic acid solution injection, or PSF as we call it, into a pipeline. You'll see the different absorptions in different uh, uh, areas that a pH probe is needed to be placed. What you see now is our standard PSF pH control panel. We have a, pH, a PID pH controller on the door there. Uh, with a rotometer, you can see through a rotometer in there. And if we open the door, we will see, I'll, I'll lead you through what's inside the panel. This is Mr. Kurt Anderson, our production foreman, opening the door for us here. Inside we have our standard CO2 gas feed system, which consists of a second stage pressure reducing valve, gauges, a, a gas feed rotometer for indication of flow, an electronic uh, control valve, which receives a signal from the pH controller, and a manual bypass valve. And then we have the water section, a two inch pipe, and an inch and a half pipe, I guess it is is our water section where we uh, add uh, carrier water at the rate of one gallon a minute per pound per hour of CO2 gas uh, for our carrier water at a minimum pressure of 50 PSI. Uh, we'll mix carbon dioxide with that, start forming carbonic acid, and then inject it into the pipeline. Uh, over here, you can see that white T there with the black hose on it. This is where we're gonna inject our carbonic acid solution. There is a diffuser in there that is designed uh, for this particular system. Uh, for the gas flow inside the panel, we have a, a core a half inch needle valve. You see it in the upper left hand corner there. And we're going to take ga direct uh, gas feed through this metallic hose over into this plastic T here where we have a fine bubble diffuser that's going to inject CO2 gas into the pipeline. You'll see what happens when we inject the gas. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start up the system, uh, start the carry water flowing, and get it ready to go online so you can see the difference in the gas. We'll leave the camera running uh, when we start this just so you can see what the process is. Okay. First, we're going to turn on the fire main back there. We're using uh, city water for this. And we're going to uh, get two, 300 gallons a minute flowing through here at about 30 PSI. You see the water start coming through the pipe there. Over to our left here we have a carrier water pump. Phillips is going to start our carrier water pump as soon as we get uh, all the air out of the line and good water flow. There we go. The carrier water pump is on. Now we're pumping about 40, 50 gallons a minute of carrier water to the panel. This panel, uh, we're going to run about 40, 50 pounds an hour rate of CO2 gas through each uh, system so you can see the difference in the system. We're going to run the uh, CO2 gas first and you'll see what happens when we run the gas into the system. Ready? Uh, start. Run 40% uh, of the rotometer for CO2 gas. I'm going to go down here and Chris is going to turn on the CO2 gas. We're now injecting CO2 gas directly into the pipeline. You can see what happens just as soon as the gas comes in. Even though it's a fine bubble diffuser there, the gas immediately goes to the between the surface of the water and the surface of the pipe. Uh, and just going down the pipeline, we have about 90 feet of pipe here. And going on down the line, you can see the next section of pipe, the CO2 gas is still at the surface of the water, surface pipe, and down and so on and so forth all the way on to the end until it goes out the other end down there. This happens every time, I don't care how you put it in the water. This being a small four inch pipe, the gas is being mixed a hell of a lot better than if it were into a, a 24 or 36 inch pipe where the CO2 gas would be just at the surface of the water and you have the rest of the water would be seeing no kind of agitation or CO2 gas whatsoever. Here again, pressure of this pipeline is about uh, 30 PSIG, and the situation would be worse if your pipeline pressures are lower, uh, less CO2 gas would go into the water. Here again, going down the line, here you can see it just continues on and on and so on and so forth, all the way down outside the line there. So, this is what happens. We're going to switch over to the PSF panel now. 
I hope this is clear video here. And what is going to stop the CO2 gas and switch over to the PSF system. Switch over to PSF now, Kurt. Okay, the PSF system here, you can see we're injecting the same amount of CO2 gas into the water as we were with the raw gas system. You can hear it in the little whistling you hear. If you look carefully, you can see a little bit of excess CO2 being released from the gas when we take the, from the water when we take the pressure drop. Again, you can see though, a half a second later, it's immediately absorbed into the main carry water stream, main water stream, and our reaction is complete. There's no off-gassing. Uh, we're thoroughly mixed with the main water supply, uh, and we can place a pH probe just about anywhere in this pipeline and know that that's what we have for a pH. the gas diffuser there and this is the PSF diffuser there you can hear it go in the water you see a little bit off gassing there let's see if we can find some more of that here again the carry water is about 40 GPM at 60 PSI on this panel and we are entirely in solution Let's see if I can get further on down the line here. You can see back up a little bit here. See, there's no off gassing at all going on with the PSF system. I change back to the gas feed again, Kurt. Right now, you can see the PSF on the right hand side. Now we're going to go back to gas feed. You see it come out of the T on the left hand side same gas flow. Now this would be the same whether you're using liquid carbon dioxide, vapor carbon dioxide, it doesn't matter how you put it in here. A Wallace and Tiernan solution style chlorinator used for CO2 injection, the same application as this. The chlorinator is nothing more than an aspirator of CO2 in the water, and that's exactly what we're doing with that T. We're aspirating into the water. You can see where what happens. Time after time after time after time. It's just not a good way to do it. Even in small basins or anything like that, it takes time for the CO2 gas to be absorbed into the water. We take care of that time in the PSF panel and make carbonic acid and have a liquid injection. We're going back to the PSF for gas going through the panel being in, incorporated into the water with the PSF system you see at the T there there's, there's absolutely zero off gassing or any, anything coming through there I hope this little demonstration is sufficient to enlighten you on what, what actually happens inside a confined area where you're putting some, trying to add CO2 gas into a system. Some systems are just better than others for addition of CO2. Years ago, we just put CO2 in the water and, and instituted a pH change. We never really controlled it too much. We just changed it. Today, uh, we need to control pH, and this is what we do with the carbonic acid feed system. I don't know of a better feed system today you can see a little bit off-gassing going on there. Uh, excess CO2 coming out of solution, and as soon as it hits the, the main water supply, due to the pressure drop, we're taking a 45-pound pressure drop in there. However, uh, one half a second away, all that fine bubble effervescence is, is absorbed into the main water stream. Again, we can place a probe anywhere in this stream and know that that's what our pH is. Whereas with the gas feed system, I don't know where you'd put a probe in there, to uh, try and determine what your pH was. 
Anyway, that's the demonstration for today.